Great. Okay, everybody, welcome to class. It's Tuesday, April 14th, and we're going to start today. I'm going to be sharing the screen to show the uh, agenda for today. So I'm having, I have a new computer, which is lovely, but it's also a little tricky to figure things out. So if I'm a little slow, I apologize. So here's your agenda for today. Um, and whoops. You have this on your Moodle and you can look at it. It's bullet pointed on your Moodle, but I'll just go through this here. Our synchronous work today is gonna to be to meet online at start of class. And then we'll be doing breakout groups um, on a Google Doc. Okay, we don't have too much more than that. I will be going over the new syllabus. If you have not taken a chance, um, taken the chance to look at the new syllabus, please go through it. I encourage you to print it out. Uh, we will go through it on this video uh, in, in this class today, but I would like everyone to spend a little time looking at it and you know maybe annotate it right in the margins if you have some questions um please ask them next time we meet so today we're going to be doing breakout groups on best practices for recursive research and the link for that is on the moodle and it says 11 30 for this class uh, google doc and we'll have a video lecture that's already linked from youtube to our today's activities which is just me going through the extended research essay handout. It's not super exciting, but I give you a lot of information about sort of how the project will come together and the essential pieces of it and talk about the due date and that kind of thing. So we will also be able to have individual check-ins. I'm going to be posting a forum on progress with primary research, and that's actually going to stay for both today and for Thursday's class, and I'll just move it to Thursday's class. At any time, you can post to that. You can post something like a question that you have. You can post, I'm just letting in Rachel. Rachel, welcome. Hopefully you can hear us, Rachel. We are beginning. Uh, we're videotaping today. Can I get your consent to videotape today? Rachel? Okay. Hello. Can we have your consent to videotape today? Yeah. Thank you, my dear. Okay, so back to our review of our work for today. The lecture on uh, extended research handout is about five minutes. It shouldn't uh, take too long for you, but please do do that in our asynchronous time. And then if you need to check in via the forum on your primary research, that will be available to you both today, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, it's a great time to just kind of post a question that you have about doing primary research or um, share your ideas or get uh, feedback. Last time we did our methods, we got some feedback. Many of you talked to me and then um, revised your work. So continue that process. Um, so homework for this uh, day, if you haven't already used the video on finding journals from Sarah Vital in the library, and that's the second video from last class's posting that's like a big bump out video. Uh, to choose one of your journal articles, at which to aim uh, your extended research essay. You're also going to be reading chapter four, pages 111 to 114, and chapter three, pages 79 to 92, a longer section from Curious Researcher. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and we'll go back to our original page. Any questions on that? And remember, at any time, you can also send me an individual question if you don't want to share. Okay, so how are folks doing on their primary research? Has anybody finished their primary research project yet and can share with us how that went? <clears throat> okay, I'll find out in our breakout groups. <laughs> Okay, any questions on primary research? One thing that was clear from the methods is that some of us are not sure of the difference between primary and secondary research. So I did a little video about the three different types of research. Um, and if you haven't seen that video from last time, please make sure you watch that. 
so that you understand um, different types of primary research and why primary research or research that you conduct yourself is different uh, from when we just read articles and then report on what they say. Um, any questions on that concept? I know some of you are like, yeah, we've got it. And other people are like, oh, I don't know. We all have kind of different levels of comfort, um, comfort with this, so that's okay. Any questions? Okay, so in our breakout groups, and I do encourage you in breakout groups, if you can go to video, go to video. It's so great to have that um, personal connection of seeing someone's face uh, when we're so solitary so much of the time or seeing the same faces over and over and over again and you wish that you could get rid of them for a while. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one who feels that way. So I'm going to put you in breakout groups. They're going to be random today. Um, and when you get there, open the Google Doc. It has instructions. You're going to be responding to two different things. First, you're going to say, like, what are some best practices for recursive research through the databases? And second, you're going to answer, what are some ways in which um, we can use Google Scholar to find things? And we should have read about using Google Scholar in um, Curious Researcher. And I've talked a little bit about it. And hopefully, you have done your own work. So. When you get to your breakout rooms, go ahead and um, discuss, then write in your Google Doc, and that Google Doc will be saved to our Google folder, okay? So I'm gonna pause the recording right now so that we can go to breakout rooms. Not now. Okay, so now we're inside of one of our breakout sessions for today. Um, what I'm sharing with each group in breakout session is a conversation a little bit about how our primary research is going, and I'll be checking in with you off camera. Um, but first I wanna just say that in our research, what we should be doing is letting our research question guide us to figuring out how to answer that research question, okay? So perhaps you have your research question and you already know you're going to do a couple of email interviews. So when that email interview data comes back, you're gonna code it. So you're not in your papers gonna have a question that you asked and then a bunch of answers and another question you asked and a bunch of answers. You're going to need to analyze the data more clearly for things like themes. So in the themes, maybe you find a couple of things that you've seen discussed in your secondary research. So in the latter half of your extended research essay, when you're reporting your findings, you're going to be connecting the findings to other people's findings. So such as similar to Aldous Huxley in his book, Brave New World, I found that society is completely falling apart or whatever, hashtag coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> so, does that make sense? So in our analysis, we, um, we give the finding, this is what we found, these are some themes we found, and then we analyze like, how does this relate to the previous work that's been done on this topic? How do we extend the research? And it's always interesting if you find something different from what people have said before, or you find something new that they haven't focused on before. Um, but that's not necessary. I just want you to understand that the primary research and the secondary research, they work together, right? Do you have any questions about that? Nope. Okay, I'm gonna pause the recording so we can talk individually. I'm gonna record this question um, because, so Lauren just asked, you know, if you're doing an email interview, how many questions do you ask? And the, important thing to think about isn't so much how many questions you ask, but that each person you reach out to has the same exact question. So you want to ask the same exact thing of all the same, all the people, um, not the same person, but different people. You want to think about three as being a good number. If you only have one person get back to you, that's fine. That's data you can use. If you have more than that, that's great. I tend to go out to more people when I think will respond, and I try to go to them just once. So send an email, and it says very briefly, I'm doing this research study. It's solely for classwork, so they know it's not going to be published. Then say, you know, if you would like to participate, three questions are below. That way you don't have to go back and forth. Like they don't have to email you back and say, yes, I'd love to participate. And then you email them the questions. Just email them once um, with the questions included and then they only have to email you back once, if that makes sense. 
So remember that what we're learning is how to conduct a research study. At the end of the day, we don't necessarily need amazing, foolproof, perfect data. What we need is to have some data and then learn how to code it and then learn how to analyze it, combine it with the secondary sources to argue for a particular finding. Um, so we don't need the data to be perfect or to be amazing uh, in quality or uh, quantity, but we do want it to be usable, if that makes sense.